late February, President Trump began downplaying the coronavirus by likening the illness to the seasonal flu. People are like, you know, I think I have the flu. It could it be the coronavirus? Overall, most people should not be terribly concerned about it. You definitely want to pay attention. Should they panic? No, Americans do not need to panic. What I would suggest, however, mm -hmm. is that Americans take this as a wake-up call for seasonal flu. Flu is a much bigger deal. There's an important context we need to keep this in, and that is that the flu is more deadly. Maybe this is a good opportunity to remind people of that. Such a good reminder. And while there's a lot of fear over this coronavirus, you know, the flu is already widespread in the U.S. and, and it really is much more deadly, is it not? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. We're going to have 40 to 60,000 deaths this year in the United States from the influenza, and it's preventable. And there are only 12 confirmed cases of coronavirus here in the state. The risk is low. The risk, however, for the flu is through the roof. Health warning from doctors, why they say people should be more worried about the flu than the coronavirus. Half of the people in America do not get a flu shot, and the flu right now is far deadlier. So if you're freaked out at all about the coronavirus, you should be more concerned about the flu. Welcome back, everyone. I got to tell you, I'm getting really worn out having to constantly, every day, go out there and refute the lies that the Democrats and their media are telling. If you know anybody who's out there and actually denies this incestuous relationship between the Democrat Party and the media, show them this and ask why the media, China, and the Democrat Party all seem to be saying the exact same things. On top of that, both of these parties, the Democrats and the media, both seem to be running cover for the Chinese Communist Party. We'll get right back to exposing this latest media con job, but first I have an important message for all my viewers. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. How utterly insane is it that all of these people for the last four years have been accusing Trump and his supporters of being Russian assets and who are now making it abundantly clear that they are agents of the CCP? Just listen to this abomination of an interview and tell me these people aren't agents of China. Uh, Sir, so I want to read you uh, a, a tweet that you tweeted out February 5th about the White House's response at that time. You said, just left the administration briefing on coronavirus. Bottom line, they aren't taking this seriously enough. Notably, no request for any emergency funding, which is a big, mis big mistake. I walked out of that uh, closed door briefing um, just with chills running down my spine because many of us on both sides of the aisle knew what this virus had done in China. We knew it was a matter of time before it arrived here. And this was at a time when the president really, you know, viewed this as a hoax. He said so on TV. And the reason that we're in the crisis that we are today um, is not because of anything that China did, is not because of anything the WHO did. It's because of what this president did. All right, a lot to unpack there, but first off, I'd say hindsight is 2020. It's easy to look back now and say, oh, Trump should have shut down the country back in January, but that's a huge step, not an easy one to take when you're getting information from both sides, and it's really still up in the air who has the accurate information. Remember, many Democrats, many in the media, and a lot of experts actually compared it to the flu up until March. Although we don't want people to be worried now, I think we need to realize that this could change. So right now, don't worry about it. Be more concerned about influenza, which is going into a second peak for the season than coronavirus. Should we be changing our habits? And if so, how? No, right now, at this moment, there is no need to change anything that you're doing on a day-by-day -day basis. There you have it, from the experts, up until the end of February. Donald Trump didn't shut down the country because he was being advised by his experts that there was no need for that. In fact, both Anderson Cooper and Sanjay Gupta were still comparing coronavirus to the flu up until the end of February. Half the people in America do not get a flu shot, and the flu right now is far deadlier. So if you're freaked out at all about the coronavirus, you should be 
more concerned about the flu. So when the media and the Democrats put forward this narrative, it's completely dishonest. And you'll notice that they never, ever, ever show these clips. And also, Dr. Fauci smacked down any attempts to say that if we had shut down the country earlier, it would have saved lives. There's no way of knowing that. And neither Anderson Cooper or uh, Senator Chris Murphy has any idea. Sanjay Gupta said that's this is all because we got started too late in the U.S. You know, it isn't as simple as that, uh, Jake. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, to just say this is all happening because we got started too late. But where we are right now is the result of a number of factors. The size of the country, the heterogeneity of the country. It's. I think it's a little bit unfair to compare us to South Korea. Also, he never called the coronavirus a hoax. That's a media created lie that was served up for the Democrats to then go into the media and tell that lie over and over. As we all know by now, Trump wasn't calling the virus a hoax. He was calling the media and Democrats attempts to politicize it a hoax. This all occurred during a rally where he was giving a speech about his plans to deal with the coronavirus outbreak. I know earlier you had said that there, there was a very coordinated effort amongst the White House and their allies to try and find scapegoats for the fatal mistakes that the president made during the early stages of the virus. Uh, you, you believe that the president made mistakes that ended up costing lives? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the fact that he didn't work with governors and mayors to um, push social distancing measures earlier has cost lives. Listen, let's be honest. Yeah, let's be honest. You know, it isn't as simple as that, uh, Jake. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, to just say this is all happening because we got started too late. As has been pointed out many times, both the media and the so-called experts were downplaying this outbreak right up until March. But of course, we get no fact checks and we get no pushback whatsoever because this isn't a legitimate interview. It's a propaganda session between a political party operative and a politician from that political party. The reason that we're in the crisis that we are today um, is not because of anything that China did, is not because of anything the WHO did, it's because of what this president God, this all started in China. In fact, to be more specific, it started in Wuhan, where, by the way, they have a bio lab that just happened to be experimenting with coronavirus. The World Health Organization then told the world not to worry about it because China said there had been no human to human transmission. Then we find out that the World Health Organization has a lot of shady business dealings with China. Shady business dealings that even CNN reported on at one point. But now they pretend like it never happened. If you have any doubt that China has these media organizations and the Democrats Democrat Party balls and a vice? Check out this story from NPR that just broke. Apparently, Bloomberg News killed some anti-China stories because they were worried about losing their business, even admitting that the Chinese government were Nazis. From the NPR article. Wiggler suggested reporters could find a uniquely Bloomberg way to cover the wealth of Chinese ruling elites. But he added a caution about covering the regime. It has to be done with a strategic framework and a tactical method that is smart enough to allow us to continue and not run afoul of the Nazis who are in front of us and behind us everywhere. So they know China's evil and they know China's our enemy and yet they choose to side with China so that they can make more money. Which just proves that they have no problems throwing out any supposed journalistic integrity. That's all for this episode, just a short one today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel and you agree with my mission, please consider supporting me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching, keep coming back.